we can. Uh, we have numerous houses alike. We're going to leave now. How far? The house is burning behind you. The house is in the street behind you, mate. Behind you on fire. We're going to go. It hit hard and there was a wall of fire in front of me and it just it was just up and over my head and over the top and started burning properties behind me. They now have approval for a 737 to drop 15,000 litres of fire retardant at the top of this fire to try and stop it uh, spreading any further north. So this could possibly help them get a hold of this fire and stop it spreading any further. Earning the Australian Literacy Award in 1939 and then going on to achieve Australia's highest award in the Order of Australia in 1980. Kylie Tennant was a true legend of our area. In the late 1960s, a man called Ernie Metcalf helped Kylie build her very own writer's retreat. This building was situated deep inside the Crowdy Bay National Park. I got to thinking that we hadn't been out to the park since the great bushfires three years ago. It devastated most of Australia. This thought deeply entrenched in my mind and whilst filming another video a couple of weeks back called In Search of Kangaroos, which took us all the way to the National Park and in particular Diamond Head, where we met locals and had a wonderful time, but I couldn't help but thinking of going deeper into the bush after those devastating fires of three years ago. So our plan was set. I had heard a rumour that Kylie's original dwelling was burnt to the ground in those devastating bushfires. So we set our sights on preparing for another journey deep inside the Crowdy Bay National Park and that we'd go all the way through to Crowdy Bay itself and see if we can discover and confirm or deny the rumours that I heard about Kylie's dwelling. Here we go. All that was left was to start early in the morning last Sunday. Author's Retreat. Diamond Head has its own special illusion. Anyone who comes there is seized with a wild resolution to stay forever. From The Man on the Headland, a novel by Kylie Tennant. Kylie Tennant spent 11 years in Lauriton as the schoolmaster's wife. She made two great discoveries whilst living there, Ernie Medcalf and Diamond Head, inspiring her to write the book, The Man on the Headland. The book tells of her love for Diamond Head, of its wild and natural beauty, and how it held captive by these same means, the man Ernie Medcalf. Kylie bought from Ernie the land at Diamond Head for her house, and Ernie helped her build it. We bought the gym rock and timber for the flooring, Ernie said and my father with great craft for building materials were still on some kind of wartime ration procured me some second grade iron roofing the great mahogany slabs two inches thick which form the outer walls Ernie brought from the old barn Here we are at Kylie's hut, so we'll go down and have a look at, uh, at the old hut. Unfortunately, uh, the people I spoke to were right. Uh, her original hut was burnt to the ground in the, those devastating bushfires a few years ago. Um, it's, it's really sad. But uh, on, a bright, on the bright side, it looks like the, they've got together and they've actually reconstructed a new hut 
right beside the old, the remnants of the old hut. So we'll go down and look at the remnants of the old hut, uh, Kylie's hut, and uh, and then we'll have a look at the new hut. Here we are. Uh, is Kylie the what's left of Kylie's original hut after the devastating bushfires? Of, a few years back. Uh, it's really sad to see that this has happened. But uh, on, a, on the bright side, uh, someone's got together. I can only assume it was the National Parks and Wildlife Association uh, of New South Wales who was uh, banded together because uh, this is in the National Park. Uh, it's banded together and, and, and and constructed a replica building right beside the original site. We'll just go into the original site now and have a bit of a look. You can see the, the bushland around here is starting to regenerate now. That was uh, it's quite badly, badly burnt out back in the bushfires and uh, starting to recover a bit now but you can you definitely see the the aftermath of a devastating bushfires here and uh, here we go these are the original foundations so it's obviously concrete and uh, and uh, local local stones by the look of that local stones I'll just come back and bring that into shot there's local stones in there all the way along the, the rear of the building um, because we're on a bit of a slope here then uh, the level to keep things level of course the pylons then play a huge part of course as they get uh, a bit more longer a bit more uh, nice and level we come over here it's really sad to see now this is the fireplace I've camped here many 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 times 40 50 years ago or oh, sorry 40 years ago 30 to 40 years ago i'm not that old and uh and yeah it's really sad to see um that this this structure is now reduced to nothing more than pylons and bricks but uh yep. Alright, I think we'll go in now and we'll have a look at the new Kylie's hut and see how they've rebuilt the thing. Yeah, everything looks everything looks reasonably genuine. They've obviously used a a slightly different method or oh, no I think it's a similar method actually looks very uh, very genuine from what I can remember of the the, uh, the structural beams here I'm pretty sure this is mm, this is genuine they've done a very good job of replicating this head up the stairs now and as we look from the porch straight over to the original foundations we're just going to open up and we're just going to go in and uh, might be a bit dark in here but we're gonna, gonna give it a shot Open the door light up. Straight away you can see that this is a magnificent building really. Like for something that's built so far from town. I mean even today it's quite isolated out here. And uh, you can see uh, the roofing iron up there that we spoke about in the bio. And there. So there's the and over here, 
Over here is the cooking area. Over here is the cooking area. This is, uh, which is very cool. And it, it look, it, it's it's identical. This is identical. Whereas re whoever has rebuilt this has done an excellent job at rebuilding this hut. Definitely. And they are wooden floors. And of course in the summer, the beauty of in here was in the summer, um, it's uh, quite, uh, quite cool with the, the breeze coming through them gaps. Essential here in Australia to have that sort of thing. It's very good, excellent, excellent, excellent job from whoever built this. That's for sure. And see so the old wooden shutters. You can't really, op you can't open them uh, these days. But I'm sure she used to be able to open those shutters as well when they needed a little bit of extra light or, or breeze coming in. There's shutters on either side at either end of the building. Now we might go out and we've got to make sure we lock the door behind us um, and show respect to the new place as we did to the old, the old place. back down the stairs. And as we can see on this side of the building, you can see them shutters, this side of the building. Quite cool. And we come up here, I noticed the sign here that says uh, the area under surveillance, it's, which is a good thing. We don't want vandals, vandalism or vandals uh, tearing the place apart. And right here, very interesting, right at the back here, exactly like the, the original hut, we have the, the water tank. Now this, this water tank would have been would have been her water supply, her only water supply out here, which is extremely important. Uh, you know, we don't have a running stream out this way, so any water uh, needs to come from from uh, the heavens, needs to come from the sky. So basically, it is like gold. You have a beach. We're right on the beach here, so there's salt water, but that's not much good. We're living out here in the 1940s, so yeah, uh, good water supply. Make sure that's off properly good and uh, yeah this is that's Kylie's hut so we've got this one brand new one I'm so glad to, I'm so happy to see the new one uh, after hearing about the the devastating destruction of the old one during the uh, the last massive Australian bushfires here in the Crowley Bay National Park and uh, that's very cool. So that's Kylie's hut, and uh, R.I.P. Kylie Tennant. I ran into a park ranger this morning, and he was telling us how Kylie Tennant was such a generous, kind person. Uh, there was a young fella that he, that she allowed to stay in a hut with her till he got back on his feet. But that's just what sort of person Kylie was, apparently. It's a little place I used to camp years and years ago. Uh, I've camped here probably, uh, probably almost a hundred, hundred times over the years. Uh, so I know this place like the back of my hand. It's a little place called Abbey Creek. Uh, although there is no creek here, there's plenty of old uh, rutile um, dugouts, digouts, 
um, like craters and things around that are filled with uh, fresh water and, and stuff. But there's a beach right behind me. So I'll give you a, a little bit of a look around. I'm just going to watch where we walk early in the morning because uh, there still might be a few snakes out on these tracks. As you see, the brown snakes out on these tracks. And they are deadly, of course. So any one of those twigs could be a brown snake. Just gotta tap your, your stick ahead. And of course I'm in a pair of thongs. And I've always worn thongs out here, but uh, I don't recommend that at all. Um, never ever wear footwear like that out anywhere in the Australian bush. Particularly where the two most deadly snakes in the world uh, reside, being the uh, eastern brown snake and the red belly black. And this is where I've seen plenty of red, um, eastern brown snakes early in the morning, uh, right here. And just stop here for a second and I'll tell you about it. Yeah, the, um, just down here, they, you can come along here and uh, you might see something that looks a bit like a twig early in the morning. They're the same colour, they blend right in, they, they just, they're, they're thin as a twig and they're extremely potent. And how big they are, they're extremely potent, they'll kill you, like here within half an hour. And uh, you might happen to come up here, if you don't happen to tap your stick or whatever and you see it, uh, if you don't see it, you're gone. But if you see it, and you come up and you tap your stick, they'll, they'll go immediately into an S shape. And never get behind them, because they can, they'll can they strike quicker behind them with more power uh, than uh, forwards. I'll give you a bit of an idea where we are in perspective to where we're going and where we've just come from. So, it'll be a bit, uh, bit difficult sort of looking into the sun, but we're going to try that first. So I'm going to, just going to, pan around to the left here and just give you a look where we've just been is the Kylie Beach and Diamond Head area uh, which that's Diamond Head in the distance up there now if we come back this way and work our way around steadily to where we're going you see way in the distance there there's another headland and that's called Crowdy Head so that's the Crowdy Head headland and we'll be heading over there shortly and then we'll be back on sealed road again because we've been on dirt road for quite a while now. We're going to go back to the car and we're going to head all the way down uh, to Crowdy Head. We're driving along here. And I just had to stop and show you guys the place uh, that really freaked me out once. Um, I, was, I was on this very road heading north from Crowdy Head, heading towards Lauriton, towards Port Macquarie direction up here at uh, quite a few knots. And in the distance, Around about here it was, right in the middle of the road here. I mean, this is going back oh, 20 years ago now, but I remember it like it was today. Right here, in the middle of the road, as I slowed back up, way up there when I saw it, I thought, what the hell is this? It was a massive, as big as my vehicle here, so a massive black cat. It just looked like a massive black cat. I slowed down. I got to about that tree there, that group of trees that's sort of up here on the on your left hand side of the road there. I got just before that. The cat turned and looked at me. Just turned straight up, looked square at me, and I had a good look at him. And in one bound, and I kid you not, in one bound, the cat then jumped over these bushes in one bound. 
these bushes are exactly the same height that they were 20 years ago. And I'm telling you now, I, I, I drove the car up to here. I wasn't going to get out. I wound the window down. It was an old 76 Galant I was in. I wound the window down. Uh, good old Chrysler Galant. I was down the, wound the window down and I looked out and my heart was thumping. I grabbed for my camera, my phone camera, and I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't see anything. I wasn't going to get out. I knew the size of this thing. But it looked to me, it looked to me like some kind of panther from the, from the, you know, the zoo footage and stuff like that I've seen over the years and since. But uh, it was a massive black cat, completely foreign to this place. Only ever saw it once. And seeing as how we we're coming along, and we're on our way over to Crowdy Head now, I thought we'd better stop and show you this and I'll tell you the story about it. <laughs> Exactly halfway along that beach is exactly where we were about half an hour ago. Anyway, folks, I hope this has been an interesting uh, journey through the Crowdy Bay National Park. Uh, it certainly has been fun for us. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And uh, we'll catch you on the next adventure. Until then, peace. Times they